Hey guys, Alex here, and I just finished, well, like an hour ago I finished the, the Germany-Argentina match, and my gosh, this is like one of, one of the best days ever, like this is, I've been waiting 20 years to watch Germany win a World Cup, um, even a Euro, because um, I've watched every tournament that Germany's been in, except for the 96 Euro, and that was the one that, that Germany actually won, so I was starting to think, after all these years, maybe I was the reason, maybe I was jinxing Germany to win. But uh, finally, 2014, Germany finally wins. It's the World Cup. That's gonna add a four star to their, to their, to their jerseys. Which, by the way, I had to get this a jersey. This is the the away jersey, which they wore against the United States, which they won 1-0, and which they wore against the Brazil, which they won 7-1. Um, I knew they were gonna wear their uh, their white ones today, but unfortunately, none of the stores had a a small shirt, and that's my size. So I had to opt for the uh, the away one. They had uh, several uh, away away uh, shirts in size in size small. So uh, this will work. I'm still gonna order the the white one too. Uh, but I have every uh, Germany uh, jersey since uh, since '98. I I've always been trying to get the '94 one, but I never saw a store that sold them in '94. So I might just order it online. '94 is actually my favorite jersey, um, just because of the color pattern so badass. Um, I personally think the jerseys this year were pretty ugly. I even made a vlog about that when they first introduced the look of these new jerseys. I still think they're ugly, but because uh, they won, I'm going to buy them anyways. Shoot, I'll buy them regardless. Um, anyways, over the years, I've lost several of my jerseys. I gave one of my, uh, one of my jerseys away to one of my friends because I, she, uh, she drove down with me to, uh, to Boca Raton to watch uh, Germany play a friendly against uh, Ecuador. So um, to thank her, to, to thank her for that, I gave her my my one of my German jerseys, and um, yeah. So what was I saying? Yeah. Uh, really quick thought before I start talking about the match. Um, it was hard finding these uh, jerseys. There was only one store in the uh, in Orlando which was actually selling these um, these German jerseys because everywhere else, like Sports Authority and Dicks. Yeah, I know it's called Dicks. They they sold out of these uh, these jerseys a while back, so that's pretty awesome, and it's also kind of annoying. It's awesome in the fact that Germany's having more supporters. At the same time, it's kind of annoying because you have all these bandwagon players. I mean, all these bandwagon supporters who are just jumping on the bandwagon bandwagon at the last second. I mean, no no disrespect. Um, that's cool of you because we all start somewhere in supporting our teams. But a lot of these people are people who have been selecting different favorite teams each week. Um, I know for a fact that, you know, these guys aren't actually, a, like, Germany fans. I've been a fan since, uh, 94, um, so I've studied their history, their language. I, I still stuck at the language. It only took, like, two years. No, no, probably, like, a year of German, but, um, I've always been a soccer player, and it's always been the Germans that I've identified with, and that that's the whole reason for me actually sticking with soccer for so long. It's because of Germany. Like, Klinsley was my favorite player growing up, like, when I watched him in the 94 World Cup, United States, um, yeah, he was like a god to me, and he still is, he's still my favorite player, I like him more than Pele, and I know that's gonna upset some people, but he's been my, my inspiration for playing soccer, maybe one day I'll have like a blonde wig, and I can run around like Klinsmann, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, um, from Klinsmann, my, my support for Germany just branched out, just to, just to love Germany every time, um, so, uh, this match, this World Cup, I predicted a 2-0 for Germany. Um, I knew this was going to be a lot tighter than the Brazil match just because uh, Argentina plays a lot tighter. Um, they have le a lot less space. Like, they proved that in this tournament. They proved that they can, uh, you know, close down all these open gaps. And um, I knew it was going to be a nail-biter. I didn't expect it to be like this, though. Yet yeah, this this game, just to say it out front, up front, uh, Germany won 1-0, but only in extra... The second half of extra time, um, you know, I was half expecting them to get into penalties, but uh, anyways, yeah. So this match, this is how it went in the first half. Um, it was pretty much uh, well, this is the wrong thing here. One second, I'm still talking. In the first half, it, look, it wasn't looking too good for Germany. I mean, uh, possession-wise, Germany was. They were still keeping the ball a lot more, but whenever Argentina went forward, it looked like they were going to score. In fact, uh, there was at least one p 
perfect opportunity, at least one or two perfect opportunities for Argentina to score. Like that one where um, Higawin or Igawin, I don't know how you pronounce that, uh, when the German defender uh, passed the ball right back to him by accident. And uh, this guy, he had himself versus Neuer, and he just completely shanked that shot. It didn't even hit anywhere near the target. It just went way out. Um, that should have been a definitive, an easy goal for Argentina. So uh, Argentina definitely had a lot more chances. That was in the first half. Um, the only thing else to say in the first half was um, before the match, uh, Kadira, um, a very uh, important part of the, the German system here, he actually injured his calf during, uh, during warm-up. That was kind of crazy when I heard that. Um, so uh, Kramer came in to replace Kadira. Um, but 30 minutes later, uh, Kramer got this really nasty hit on the head, and uh, it knocked him down really, really badly. Like, when you watch the replay, he started wobbling. When he got up, he, he didn't look very good. Um, there's actually a guy at my, at my college who, um, he got hit in the head with a, with a baseball. No, actually, it was a softball. And, um, yeah, he, he said he was okay, you know, when he got back up. And then, like, like a few minutes later, he just, he died. Um... So yeah, that's never a pretty thing when you get hit in the head and you're and you're wobbling because it it, it can be very uh it can be very serious. So I hope Kramer's okay. But that was in the thirtieth minute. Um, the thirtieth minute. Yeah, Shirley came in. Kramer came out. Um, and then uh, Huvedes in the thirty fourth minute got a uh, a yellow card. And also uh, a little before that time, at some point, uh, Schweinsteiger got a yellow card as well. So two yellow cards for Germany in the first half. Um, in the uh, yeah, so 0-0 zero, zero in the first half, but Argentina looked a lot more dangerous than Germany did. Um, I, I've, I've been saying it in every vlog, Germany's back line, it's, it's really dangerous. If it wasn't for Neuer in the back, I think Germany would have had allowed a lot more goals in their, you know, throughout this tournament. It's, it's always dangerous. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing how few teams actually capitalize on Germany's uh, back line. Um, but anyways, uh, second half, uh, Argentina subbed out Aguero. No, no, I can't read this. Lavezzi? They took him out and put in Aguero. Aguero. Um, in the 59th minute, the uh, statistic was that Germany was possessing the ball 63% compared to Argentina with only 37% possession. That's, that's nothing new. Um, even against the Holland, uh, Argentina surrendered possession stats. But uh, in the end, Argentina won that game. So I still wasn't very, you know, confident, even though Germany was possessing the ball more, because the Argentina is a lot different. They they can score, they can score. They, they proved that in the first half. I mean, they didn't score, but they had the opportunities. So sixty uh, fourth minute, um, Mascherano got a yellow card, and then seventy seventh minute, Palacio came in. Iga Win came out. I was I wasn't too surprised uh, because he he completely missed that golden opportunity. He should have scored that. Like he should have scored that. 88th minute, uh, Klose came out and Goetze came in. Um, it was great to see uh, Klose come in. This is probably his, uh, I mean, to see him go out. No, it wasn't great to see him go out. It was great to see him play. But this is probably his last World Cup, to be honest. He's, what, 36? Um, but he's a legend, guys. Most World Cup goals ever. And he uh, he broke that record in the, in the Brazil match. Yeah. So... That's the end of, uh, of the 90 minutes. It was still 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, second half, Germany's playing a little bit better, but Argentina still looked a lot more dangerous, in my opinion. Um, but extra time. Um, going into extra time, I was kind of hoping that Germany would either get a sucker punch with a quick goal, or, or they actually just went into penalty kicks, because uh, Germany has, in my opinion, the best keeper in the world, with uh, Manuel Neuer. And... Uh, History has proven that Germany is pretty damn good at penalty kicks, so, yeah. So, extra time, first extra time, no one scores. Second extra time, Goethe, Mario, Super Mario Goethe scores in the 113th minute. Um, it was beautiful. Like, I just can't describe it, it was beautiful. I guess any goal at that point from Germany would have been beautiful, but it was, it was from Mario, so he is Super Mario. Goal, and, um, yeah, after that, uh, Argentina still had, like, seven more minutes or so to, uh, to equalize so even though Germany had a goal I was a pretty I was pretty happy but I was still biting my nails because you know Argentina could score they could easily score um 120th minute um Yugilo brought in a Mirozaker he's a defender and they brought out Urzel so you can see what uh 
Yu-Gi-Oh was trying to do. He's trying to um, cement that, you know, hold on to that 1-0 lead, and they did. Um, it was the most beautiful thing in the world watching uh, Germany lift that trophy. And um, it's quite disturbing seeing Schweinsteiger and Podolski kiss. Well, almost kiss. But it, it was so funny. It was awesome. Um, I probably, I think I put that on my on my Facebook. No, I haven't put it on my Facebook yet. I will. It's funny. Um, and it, it was just, it was awesome. My gosh, I can't describe this feeling. Because I've been watching uh, Germany since 94, and I've never seen them win anything. And they said, I, I didn't, I missed the 96 uh, Euro. Um, I mean, they showed it in the United States, but uh, yeah, I, I guess I just didn't know about it, or I was doing something. I, I missed it. But I've watched every Euro since, every World Cup since, um, and I never saw Germany win. Um, I remember the disaster of 2000 where Germany couldn't win a single game. Um, I think they tied against England in that, I think. I'm trying to, trying to remember. It's been a while. Um, but gosh, congratulations to, uh, to Super Deutschland. That was, oh my gosh. That has just made 2014 one of the most memorable years for me. Um, I can't wait for the the next Euro. I want to see Germany win uh, the Euro. That would be amazing. Um, and yeah, I'm still going to order the uh, the white, the the home jersey for Germany because um, in my opinion, uh, the white one is is their um, is their most distinctive look. It's also the one that they won in this final. Um, but it's good to have the away and home just just because it's awesome. If you look at mine. It's red and black. It looks, it looks kind of bizarre to be honest. Uh, I think there's actually a, a Brazilian club that wears these colors, <laughs> so it's kind of, it was odd. But I'm gonna buy it. It's there's nothing badass about wearing an ugly jersey. It's, oh my gosh, I don't know. So uh, yeah, good game. Um, I want to thank my friend uh, from Wales, uh, Adam. Um, he has been. Uh, like uh, tweeting me back and forth between these matches so uh, thank him and he actually visited me uh, we well, visited Orlando and I saw him when he came he was checking out you know the Orlando scene the theme parks the beaches and all that but uh, yeah good game to all my uh, to all my viewers I have a lot of uh, like friends from uh, you know I consider them friends these are guys I've never met but like people from YouTube like um, like I have a lot from uh, from Norway and Germany who were um, you know, who are just messaging me on, on YouTube and on Facebook too, you know, offering support um, because we're all fans here. And it, a lot of people were, to be honest, like not just from Norway and Germany, but from all over the world, people from Australia, um, even uh, U.S. And, and people who know who knows that I don't like their team, you know, they, you know, they're supporting me anyways. Um, this is a good feeling all around. But uh, yeah, uh, this video is too long now. 13 minutes. I'll see you guys. Put your thoughts in this uh, in this video. Put your thoughts in the comments. Um, my gosh, I'm, I'm so happy, guys. You, you have no idea. Um, yeah, I'm using my, my microphone. I got this from YouTube, by the way. It helps a lot in conventions. In conventions, it's really loud. All right, see ya. Feed is in.